Ladies and gentlemen, when Oxide released Ashes of the Singularity, many were baffled as to the reason that Nvidia's Maxwell architecture wasn't performing as well as what it should be. You might recall that there were a series of posts which were switched between Nvidia and um, Oxide games, each one blaming the other one for the rather underwhelming performance compared to AMD's R9 290 or say the 390 or 390X if you will. Now, fast forward to today, and Oxide have pretty much confirmed, along with AMD, a few major bombshells, and these are bombshells which are echoing into the mists of time. Well, maybe I'm slightly overselling that, but it's pretty profound, and NVIDIA aren't really commenting on it. Robert Halleck, who is the technical marketing lead over AMD, said Oxide effectively summarised my thoughts on the matter, we'll get into that in just a second. Nvidia claims full support for DirectX 12, but they're conveniently ignoring that Maxwell is utterly incapable of performing asynchronous compute without heavy reliance on slow contact switching. He further goes on to say that GCN has supported asynchronous set shading since the inception and it did so because we hoped and expected that gaming would lean towards these heavy workloads. Uh, Mantle, Vulcan and DirectX 12 all do and the consoles do with gusto. PC games are chock full of computer driven uh, effects and if memory serves GCN has a uh, higher flop slash MM2 than any other architecture and GCN is once again showing its prowess when utilised with common sense workloads that are appropriate for the design of the architecture. Now you may think to yourself, well, of course AMD are going to say that because let's face it, it benefits them to call out Nvidia. However, we have already reported just a day or two ago that, you know, Oxide have already stated that one of the reasons that AMD are enjoying the performance benefits with um, Ashley of Singularity is that they had put some um, mild, I believe was the term. It was something along those lines anyway, amounts of asynchronous compute work actually in their game. And they say that as far as I know, Maxwell does not support asynchronous compute, at least not natively. We disabled it. Um, at the request of NVIDIA as it was much slower than trying to use it than not. Whether or not asynchronous compute is better or not is subjective, but it definitely does buy some performance on AMD hardware. Whether it's the right architectural decision for Maxwell or is even relevant to its scheduler is, and they quote, hard to say. Getting back to Team AMD, they say that there is no such thing as full support for DirectX 12. I think gamers are learning the important lesson. There is no such thing as full support for DirectX 12 on the market. There are many attempts to distract people from this truth through campaigns and deliberate conflate of feature levels, individual untiered features, and the definition of support. This has been confusing, caused so much unnecessary heartache excuse me, and rumor mongering. Here is the unvarnished truth. Every graphics architecture has unique features and no one architecture has them all. Some of the unique features are more powerful than others and yes, we're extremely pleased that people are finally beginning to see the game of chess we've been playing with the interrelationship of GCN, Mantle, DirectX 12 and Liquid VR, end quote. Well, not so much with the end quote because Robert then goes on to state that the Fury X is also missing some DirectX 12 features and they are rastered ordered views and conservative raster. In case you're wondering what the balls they are, you could search for it on redgamingtech.com uh, and it will pop up, I promise you, and we explain it. I don't want to dedicate too much technical video, uh, to too much of this video to that because we've already got to talk about, um, well, asynchronous compute a little more, so I don't want to make this too much jargony. If that made any sense, God, you can tell I've come back from work. Anyway, Thankfully, the, the techniques that enable these, like global illumination, Robert continues, can already be done in other ways at high frame rates. See Dirt Showdown, he uh, points out. Now, I do want to just touch once again on what asynchronous shaders slash compute is. Once again, we have already discussed this in fairly in-depth um, technology speak. But with so much emphasis on this, I do want to just go over it one more time. So, considering that the average GPU now has at least a thousand shaders for a PC, uh, the Xbox One has around 768, 
you've got the PlayStation 4 at 1152. Um, you've got high-end GPUs which have two, three, four thousand ish. Obviously, I'm rounding it down or up, depending. Now, you might think to yourself, well, that's great, right? The problem is, not so much. Just with how GPUs at the moment are working, you get basically bubbles in the rendering pipeline, and you get shaders which are just literally doing nothing. Um, it's not the GPU's fault per se, it's just the way the schedule has been working along with the CPU. Effectively speaking, it means that the GPU is just not reaching its full potential. Multi-threaded graphics in DirectX 11 just don't really allow for multiple tasks to be scheduled simultaneously. At least unless you want to become ridiculously complex in your design methodology. And for PCs, that's even more difficult because you're not dealing with a fixed specification. For example, you know... Jim over there might have a R7 250X, whereas, you know, Joanne might have an R9 280, and then you might have Bob who has, like, you know, a GTX 970, and then you might have someone else who's got something else, and it becomes really difficult to, um, to optimize, is pretty much where I'm going with this. Therefore, you've got a great number of GPU resources which are basically doing nothing. You've just got idle time um, because the command stream simply cannot keep up. You can't send data to the GPU fast enough, which is part of the whole thing of DirectX 12, right? You've got, you know, multiple CPU threads running, well, multiple threads running across multiple CPU cores, which can send data much more effectively. Now, you also have situations where you've got compute tasks as well. Graphics preemption allows for prioritizing tasks, but just like multi-threading graphics, it doesn't solve the problem necessarily. Um, as you can't actually have multiple tasks handled and submitted simultaneously independently of one another. So in other words, yeah, you can have context switching, which we'll go into in just a second, uh, some of this stuff, by the way, if you want a much more in-depth technical analysis of this, you could probably look at the Xbox One SDK breakdown, specifically with the graphics. I have discussed this stuff really in-depth if you want to know about it. Um, I don't want to make this ultra-technical because otherwise it's going to become quite a lengthy video, to be totally honest. And normally I have scripts and notes for this, and I'm reading this off the top of my head, which is not ideal. So, with DirectX 12, Vulcan, Mansell, um, they have what is known as asynchronous shaders. And it is a multi-threaded approach to graphics technology. It I guess you could say it's a crude way of almost multi-threaded CPU, but not quite. It's specifically for graphics. So you can have each one of those shaders. By the way, just for your FYI, some people are going to call them shaders, some people are going to call them CUDA cores, some people are going to call them shader processors. They all are the same thing. NVIDIA call them CUDA cores, AMD calls them uh, stream processors. I personally generally call them ALUs or shaders, because I guess it's kind of the most neutral one I guess now the reason AMD's GPUs are so good at this according to AMD and Oxide is because of their asynchronous compute engines what this basically does is it allows the GPU to or ACES basically allow the GPU to kind of self monitor you have the ACES which will um, be able to kind of segment and control the work they will independently schedule the work and then dispatch them as required they operate in parallel with the graphics command processor and therefore they will say okay shaders abc you need to do this shaders you know f y f through y you can do this and you know what shader z you can just run this a little bit here because it's not that important but when more shaders come available by golly you can have them helping you it's that simple. So you've always had at least two ACES. On the other hand, some have more. For example, the R9, let's say the 290X, has eight ACES. ACES have been around for some time. They were originally part of the GCN architecture way back in Tahiti. Tahiti was like 
for example the 7970 and has been around for some time. They are not going anywhere. Now you might recall we also did another video which was saying that, you know, graphics and PCs which um, you know are going to be using asynchronous compute is going to have a, up to a 46% boost in performance which is quite profound. It's really difficult to know however because you might listen to this and you say oh shit that means that Mantle, I'm sorry, that AMD are going to bitch slap Nvidia. Well once again it does depend upon workload, it does depend on how things are going to go in the future because frankly you and I just don't know that. I don't even think developers know that at the moment, if I'm totally honest, because it's still really early. The feather in AMD's cap, and I guess you could say the reason that AMD are kind of benefiting from the console generation, other than the fact they're selling a shit ton of APUs, is simple. What does the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 have inside of it? A GCN architecture based GPU. It doesn't matter necessarily about the feature levels at this point, it doesn't matter about the number of shaders, it could have 10 shaders, it could have a billion shaders, the bottom line is it's still based on the GCN architecture. What does that mean? Well, Oxide have already stated that, you know, console guys are getting 30% boost in GPU performance by using asynchronous shaders. They've stated this, this is like a given. And you might say to yourself, well, you know, Give me an example. Well, the PlayStation 4 is using it for Infamous Second Son. Yeah. Battlefield 4, The Tomorrow Children, and this is according to AMD themselves. And by the way, we've also done technical analyses for Infamous Second Son, and we've done it for other games as well. Um, if memory serves, a couple of Naughty Dogs games are using it. Uh, there are definitely quite a few on the PS4, and I definitely remember I believe Killzone might be, but I definitely remember discussing in depth with Infamous Second Son. If you want to take a look at that, you can do. You can simply search Second Son or Infamous on redgamingtech.com and it will pop up. And I have gone through all of the technical analysis with it. Bear in mind, it's it's quite in depth and very, very technical. So if you're just wanting something quick, probably not for you. But if you want something really in depth, then definitely something to kind of read over if you really want to know how the developers are making use of this technology. The bottom line is that the consoles are using it. They are leveraging it. They are enjoying it and they are feasting upon its flesh because it's just how the consoles are going to work. One can also therefore argue that rather than having an engine which is specific for just the PC. Most developers are going to, of course, use an engine like Unreal or what have you and then port it. Now, Unreal's asynchronous is not so hot at the moment, but that could change in the future. The bottom line is, if you're creating a game, it doesn't matter what it is, let's just call it Killerphon 3000, and you're optimizing it for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, and you are going to be using asynchronous compute, there's a good possibility that you will at least leave those pathways inside for the PC because it just possibly makes sense. But once again, this is all idle speculation. I will probably do a lot more on asynchronous compute over the next, I don't know, couple of weeks-ish. I don't want to make an exact promise because there is so bloody much at the moment that we are covering. We've had Metal Gear Solid, we've got an SSD we're trying to review, which, considering doing Mad Max, if we've got the morale to do it at this point, uh, Gears of War, plus a bunch of other stuff, plus as well we're building new systems. It's just a little crazy at the moment here at RGT. Uh, so do bear in mind, it's not because we're trying to shirk our responsibilities and covering all the stuff for you, but if I want to do something, I don't want to do it in a shitty manner because that's just that just sucks. To be honest with you, also, we're playing around with some different formats in the background. Uh, obviously, you guys might have seen a couple of examples of them, and so we're not quite 100% certain of the direction we're going to go with that yet. So I would rather wait for something technical like this and kind of do it in a really awesome manner just to make it kind of visual but there will be something over the next couple of weeks anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now